Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to be diving into your personality superpower and how there's three aspects that you can look at to basically create a map for knowing exactly what your unique gifts and talents and strengths and weaknesses are on the journey of getting to your sense of self-love in your best life. But before we get into it, I just want to remind you that this Sunday, October 1st, we are going to do it live in a Zoom call with you. So if you watch this video and you feel a little overwhelmed or you need a little more support doing it, plus to mention it's so much fun when you do it with a group, then click the link below in the description and sign up for our live personality superpower workshop. It's so much fun. We did one in person last week. Such a great evening for us and the attendees. So we hope you join us live this Sunday. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Gabby. I'm Robin. And we're here to help you be the hero of your story. Um, so like I said, we're going to be diving into the unique strengths and talents uh, of different personality typing systems that can basically give you the key to your personality superpower. So the first thing we're going to start with is the Enneagram. A lot of people think that the Enneagram is just some quiz that they take. Um, they think some people say, oh my gosh, the Enneagram is just putting me in a box. A lot of people think that about personality typing in general, that it's just putting you in a box. But the thing is, uh, you are living in a box anyway. <laughs> you are in, inherently, as a human being on earth, putting yourself, you cannot exist on earth without have cre having created a belief system that you are addicted to. And this belief system that you're addicted to, at the root, tends to fall into one of nine different types. And this is called your Enneagram. Now the Enneagram is powerful because it gives you two things. First thing is, it, by seeing what box you've put yourself in inherently, naturally, by default, you have the key to get out of that box. You have the key to get out of that cage. But the other part of it is realizing that, well, sure, yeah, you have this one of nine different ways that you're addicted to thinking. But with that personality that you've taken on, you also have a very strong skill set. You have a gift that lies within your hurdle, within your obstacle. And even though the, the Enneagram has growth numbers, by realizing what, what uh, Enneagram you are, you know what the path to growth is. Yeah, so think about it. Like, what is the belief that's ruling your day today? Is it, I must be perfect. I must help. I must achieve. I must be special or unique. I must have information or be resourceful. I must be loyal. I must seek fun. I must be powerful. Or I must be harmonious. I must not rock the boat. One of those is the core belief thing is, is your wings on the side are your behaviors. And depending on how much time you spend reflecting or practicing metacognition when you observe your thoughts, you might be seeing yourself through the lens of behavior and not through the lens of the inner dialogue. Remember, your subconscious is controlling 95% of the thoughts that are happening. So only 5% you're really aware of. And part of learning about the Enneagram is bringing the subconscious thoughts to the conscious mind so that you can realize that, oh, I thought I was running, that it must be fun because I live my life based on chasing fun when really it's that I feel deep down that I must be powerful. And the reason, personally, as an Enneagram 8, that I feel I must be powerful is because I have a childhood wound, that somebody didn't protect me. I got scared and they weren't there for me. And so I told, my brain told me to stay safe. You have to be the strongest person in your life. And I played that for a really long time. And you might have, Gabby, when she was younger, was very much the program of I must achieve I must play competitive sports. I must be the best at these things. Otherwise, I might die. I don't know who I am outside of that. And so through the Enneagram growth numbers, like in my case, as really stepping into first that number two, and for Gabby, stepping into that number six, I can learn like, hey, while it's great to be strong, while it's great that you have power, you know, maybe it's okay to like uh, dampen that a little bit or hone it down a bit and then practice from compassion. And I can tell you personally, Great things have come to my life by me just showing up not with this fear that I can't trust and instead to be like you know what I think everybody else is kind of struggling the same as me maybe I can just meet them where they are and share some of my wisdom which is number three that we'll get to 
and you probably feel the same. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, one thing is a lot of people mistype on their Enneagram because of what she said about the behaviors of the wings. And I think one way that you can help uh, realize what your number is, is by looking at what the potential growth path of each type is. And the one that feels like, ooh, I don't want to do that is most likely the one that you are, that aligned growth path is your, probably your core Enneagram type. I think that for sure, because as an Enneagram 3, um, and we're going to get into this in a sec, because this really ties into your energetic imprint too, where my Enneagram growth path as a type 3 is to step into the qualities of a 9, but more importantly, the qualities of a 6. And the 6 is the loyalist, who in their best is uh, trusts. Loyalty and trust work hand in hand. And so going from type 3, I feel like I have to make things happen. If I don't do it, nothing will nothing will materialize unless I force it to. And type six in their positive traits is that they trust that, oh, good things happen. If I just stay loyal to the process, then I am rewarded for it. And that feels like, what? I can't do that. But in moments of my life where I have been able to surrender into that trust, into that loyalty, well, not only does do you, like, do you feel better as an individual by stepping into your growth number? I feel better when I step into that, but it also tends to bring me more of a sense of the things that I'm looking to create in my life. They usually tend to come faster when I'm stepping into that growth than if I'm trying to just stay addicted to my achievement oriented self. Yeah, and I was thinking even as like a growth from three to six, if, um, if you are in that number dynamic, it's an inner to outer. Sixes tend to trust in systems, in people, in ideologies, and threes tend to be extremely self-reliant. I can do this. This is why threes and ones mistype so often. It's because it's uh, very much a function of a one has to be loyal to morality, and whereas a six is, tends to be loyal to ideologies or people for protection, and a three is very much like I want this thing and so loyal to their goals and their goal. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to achieve. I want to be the best on the sports team. I want to move up the hierarchy really fast. Whereas ones are disciplined to more principles and more into the system itself or whatever they value, they, they um, see as the right system. It's funny because there's like, it's little subtleties and you know, Sometimes it's hard to see people mistype and you are just like, oh, you just want to tell them so bad. And you're like, oh, you know, you have to realize it for yourself. So the best thing we can invite you to do is be curious and open minded that what if like play devil's advocate with yourself? Well, what if I think I'm a three and I'm going to like pretend I'm a one or vice versa? Or what if I think I'm a six, but, um, you know, really I'm an eight. That actually happens the inverse. Most of the time people think they're an eight but they're really a six, and that's a common mistype. Uh, there's a couple other, what do you think the other common? common Twos and nines. Two and nine is a very common mistype. Yes, uh, three, and, three and one, four and seven. Um, I think four and two, four sometimes and two, two depending bit. on. Yeah. So it's really, it's the Enneagram, I mean, we can't go into all of it right here because we have so many great videos on it, but when you really understand <clears throat> the dynamic of it, it's, it's power, it is a superpower. <laughs> Excuse me. And in uh, Beatrice Chestnut's book, uh, the 27 archetypes, or 27 uh, yeah, okay. archetypes, okay, she talks about this a lot at the beginning of how we are in uh, a time in the world where everybody is searching for meaning, feel lost, but they're making the mistake of acquiring data. This is really like what the root of our coaching is about, is transforming data into application. Like taking, this information's great. You can go walk around and be like, I am an Enneagram four wing five. I am super unique. It's really important for me to have a sense of belonging and I'm really great at finding data. That's awesome. It's awesome, but you can't stop there. We have to go fat past that using the next two things and, and then integrate integrate that into the life that would be that would serve your skill set your talents and your passions um the the other thing is in the enneagram i don't know if this very good picture but it's kind of cool. this is book. her other book but you can see the symbol of the enneagram uh it's it has three different symbols in there you've got the circle unity consciousness 
or the power of one. You've got the triangle, which can be represented in uh, the Trinity, or she talks a lot about triads, because the number three plays in a lot of ways. So you've got one number, you've got a growth number and a stress number, but you're actually trying to integrate all three together. And then you've got your core number and the wings, which play three too, so you're like balancing the wings all the time. You've got three numbers that are in the head triad, you've got three numbers that are in the body triad and three in the heart triad. So it's really, you can go really far in looking for meaning just by understanding that. And then you've got the law of seven or the, uh, what do you call the seven? Um, pentacle. It's not pentacle, that's five. The, when you have, you have seven and that represents like cycles and the cycl cyclical nature of humanity. Everything's, everything goes through a process. So where you are now, people ask us often, can you change Enneagrams? No, but you might change, I think in subtypes. I really do think so. We didn't even types, you can become so embodied into your growth that you may seem like another type. Or vice versa, so or into your versa, stress. You can be so into your stress that you seem like another type. The question is, what's the core wound, the core karmic belief that you're here to work on and overcome? And no matter how much you work on, it's always going to come back. But you will be able to step through different phases of your growth and evolution. Now that you know your Enneagram, the next part is where it gets really fun because as much as what Enneagram is so, so important, if you stop there, you're gonna miss out on so much potential. Like your superpower really, really, truly starts in this next step. And this next step is your birth chart, your natal chart. Understanding all elements of it, not just your sun sign. Your sun sign is great, but that just is kind of like your general life path. It really doesn't give you that much insight. Yeah, so you're, you're <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> it's because I ate a brownie. Okay. Sorry. Your sun sign is really more of your ego self. So think about your ego. For the most part, our ego is an unnecessary defense mechanism that over that over defends us. It's like a bodyguard that doesn't let anyone in and always trying to protect us. That's your sun sign. How you see yourself. Well, that's not necessarily the core of who you are. So then we get into the more important part, something like your moon sign. Your moon sign is your deeper emotional nature. You're an emotional being. And so your moon sign being your emotional sign tends to be closer to the resonance of who you are. Your moon sign is often explained that only people, the closest people in your life. So your immediate family, your close partnerships, or really, really close friends see your, uh, see your moon sign. And your moon sign, depending on different aspects of your chart, might not be allowed. I was recently working with someone who uh, had a moon in Aries and this moon in Aries aspect did not make sense uh, for this individual because uh, this individual was an Enneagram one and, and it, it, the Aries archetype tends to be a little bit more, I wouldn't say that it can be impulsive, but rather it's just very assertive and takes ownership over. I am, an, I am the lead I'm in charge of my life. I do what I want. It represents kind of the beginning of a hero's journey. Um, it's very assertive. And then the Enneagram 1, uh, it can be assertive, but the Enneagram 1 is not necessarily the most um, the most selfish type. They're trying to do everything for other people. Um, they're trying to be um, moral and be what's good. So depending on what they see as morals and what's good can dictate whether they are deciding to be uh take leadership about something that they want. So there was conflict here. And this was because of, well, so your Enneagram, that's an example of how your Enneagram can tend to um, lead you into not embracing the aspects of who you are. Aspects in your chart would be like, if you let, anytime you have a square in your chart, this means that you're gonna have conflict between these two parts of yourself. And so if you had a conflict between, let's say your rising sign of how you appear to other people and your moon sign, uh, of how your deeper emotional nature, then you're going to struggle with both of those things whenever you're embodying them and you're going to feel that emotional turmoil. This is why it's super important to have someone like Isabel do a full astrology reading because she can look at the actual aspects of your chart to see like, oh look, you're going to struggle here. But then there's other parts to your astrology chart. You've got your Venus sign and your Mars sign, which are extremely helpful in knowing how you take action and what brings you joy in life? What brings you the joie de vivre of life is found in your Venus sign, while your Mars sign is more about how are you gonna be really effective at getting things done? You also have your Mercury sign, which I think is super helpful when it comes to choosing a career and communicating with uh, your partner. 
Um, your Mercury sign is how you think, speak, and process the world. So this is huge. That's a big part of ourselves as individuals, how we think and speak. So this can help you know what, how you're going to uh, do the right kind of job. Are you someone who's going to be better at speaking? Are you going to be better at doing thinking through processes, if you are more, maybe a Mercury Virgo, or you're going to be detail-oriented, or maybe you're going to have a Mercury in Leo, which means you're going to be better at speaking in a way that brings attention and gathers people to excitement. Um, that's found in your Mercury signs. There's all these amazing parts of your chart that can help you uh, indicate to you what your gifts are. It's silly to go through your life pretending to be something you're not because you'll never be able to embody that aspect of yourself. Myself as a Mercury and Aquarius, if I tried to go around being like a Mercury and Aries, if I tried to serve myself as the most upfront and leadership oriented and borderline aggressive, but to the degree of like stating what pe people need to hear, if I tried to be that, I would never be able to really embody that because my Mercury is in Aquarius. Aquarius is all about the collective and the collective embodiment of individualism. And if I can own those aspects of myself, which mostly has to do with uh, embodying your own beliefs around that archetype, then I am better able to share my gifts with the world. Absolutely. And the reason we have superpowers in the first place is to fight evil. Well, the evil in the case of astrology is your south node. Not really, but we're just going to look at it in the sense of it's something you've already mastered. In theory, hopefully you are here for a self-growth journey. Hopefully you want to become more. That's part of the whole uh, meaning crisis that we're in is that we don't have enough opportunities in our day to seek out meaningful experiences. Even though we want meaningful relationships, we end up caught in a pattern, a very predictable pattern of outsourcing our self-worth to everyone else's expectations, to outsourcing our time, to jobs and routines and things that don't necessarily bring us joy. Well, your south node is really what you're already good at. Like, it's the skill set you're already going to rely on. And if you use your superpowers in a way that helps you reach towards your north node, then you get to embody a much more joyful experience in your life. If you're looking for meaning, my favorite way to describe so. We talk about soul purpose a lot, not just purpose, soul purpose, because soul purpose is what gives you that sense of meaning. Purpose could be anything, it could be any goal, anything you're working towards. But soul purpose means you have to tap into what's, what your gifts are in your soul and what that yearning that you have is in your soul. And so very similar to your Enneagram growth member, your North Node kind of represents that thing that's like, ugh, I don't want to do that. Please don't do anything but that. Um, and it's often going to align with your growth path as your Enneagram type. It'll be probably very similar. But the thing with finding meaning is that finding meaning and finding soul purpose is about turning your obstacles into opportunity. That's what creates a meaningful life. But it has to be something that's in alignment with your desires. In our Best Life Blueprint, we started day one with talking about what is it that you really want? And despite whether you start a personality or whether you... Um, start with natal chart readings, it always comes back to what is it that you want in your best life? Because the thing is, you're going to have this hurdle in front of you, that hurdle of your north node, your Enneagram growth number. And there's going to be no reason for you to want to go over that hurdle unless you have something on the other side of it. And when you have those two things, when you recognize that, oh, this is my hurdle, this, these are the shadows I have to overcome, this is my karmic growth, and on the other side of it, there's this another level of happiness that I'm going to attain. That path ahead of you is what creates meaning and what creates a purposeful life. 100%. So there's a lot to be seen um, in your natal chart. We highly recommend that uh, you do a natal chart reading with Isabel. You can get the link for that down below because she's going to give you a lot of insight. But even she will tell you at the end of that natal chart reading, don't stop there because the next level is Gabby has an amazing gift uh, of taking your Enneagram and your story and weaving it together to understand what your soul's what your soul is here to do, what those obstacles are that you're gonna to have to overcome. Typically our obstacles are our self-limiting beliefs and pulling those apart because sometimes we don't see 
the belief that's holding us back, but we're really good at speaking it through our story. When we're justifying, this happened to me, this is what, this is what I experienced. There's clues and sometimes we just don't pick them up in ourselves. So definitely click, uh, click the link below and uh, do Gabby's Know Your Soul after you do a uh, reading with Isabel. And then you'll be ready to do Architect Your Dream Life with me. And in Architecting Your Dream Life, we really start to bring in the third factor. And the third thing, so Enneagram's first, Nato Chart's second. The third factor is numerology. And like Gabby was saying, um, we're here for a meaningful experience. Numerology kind of shortcuts what that soul's purpose is. If you have no background, though, in Enneagram or astrology, I think numerology can feel like empty a little bit or like too vague, like there's not enough direction. But by knowing natal chart, knowing Enneagram, and then applying numerology overlaid on top of it, then it's like, oh, of course, now I get why as an eight, Enneagram eight, who had to protect herself, that all of a sudden my life path as a 36 nine is to overcome my self doubt and really embody helping others by sharing just my story, not telling them. And any roommate wants to be like, here's what you should do, right? As opposed to like, well, in my experience, this is this is what's happened. This is this is why I feel this way, this is why I think this way, this is this is the risk I've taken. You know, you might want to try it too. It worked out pretty good for me, but hey, let's look at your chart and see if that can work the same for you. That wouldn't make sense if Gabby's a um, moon in Aquarius or Mercury in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Like that's naturally gonna come to her. Hence why she's so good at know your soul. But when it's time to build a house, when it's time to be like, hey, I'm gonna, like, what's your dream life? Let's make this happen. Let's not make it talk. Let's build this dream house, this dream life. Then it, sometimes it helps that I am a little bit more assertive and that I can be like, hey, in order to get the framework up, we're gonna have to get over this hurdle. Let's go. Let's put it into a plan and take action. So you have the same gift. You have, what we're talking about here, you have that same thing. You have a numerology path that when used correctly will be in alignment with your Enneagram growth and with all of your uh, signs in your chart and will make it so that you can embody the what we really want in the end is meaningful experiences, meaningful relationships and an abundance of self-love because the personality superpower is about learning to show up and love yourself first. You can only love somebody else to the extent that you can love yourself. So if you're constantly telling yourself, I, I, I just give out to everyone because I love them so much, but you've fallen asleep to your own sense of self, then you really can't love it, those people fully. You're looking to grab attention or affirmation, and we want to shift that. We can want to love ourselves so much that our joy is just beaming out, and then we're helping others from a much more powerful space. I can't say enough how much all of these three things together uh, are so, so, so powerful and so, so, so impactful. Uh, yes, I think each of these things stand alone does not give you enough. I think if you're into astrology and you don't look at your Enneagram, you're completely missing the aspect of, of childhood programming and trauma responses and how you have a wound and how you have this story that you're now living your life by. But then if you take the Enneagram without astrology and numerology, sometimes you're left without, well, shoot, well, now what, how do I fix this problem? I've got this problem here, but what tool do I pick up? Well, basically, I'll use the analogy that you're walking around with a shield, and that's great. You're going to be on defense the rest of your life. You only know Enneagram, you're like, boom, I'm on defense. You bring in astrology, now you have an offense to use. You have skill sets, tools, weapons that can help you achieve what you want. And I know you might be, oh, but I'm nonviolent. I want everything past, like, harmonious. And, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta like take charge and conquer the land of your dreams. Yeah, so we highly recommend that if, if you don't know where to start, the first place that you should start is that you should join us for your personality superpower workshop. This is kind of like a fun and impactful space that we all come together, almost like we're getting together for coffee. Um, and you can actually, we're, we're talking, it's interactive. You gotta have an actual soundboard for us to bounce ideas off of. Um, if you want a full nail chart reading where you're just getting a space for you to find out as much about yourself, 
then skip the workshop and just dive straight into a natal chart reading so that you can begin your journey to your best life. But the personality superpower workshop is really fun, um, and you'll actually get to share what your what's in your actual birth chart. So it's not just us talking um, and you listening. You'll get to actually share in that space. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to leave us a comment if you have any questions relating to these three aspects of your personality. Thanks for joining us. Namaste. Namaste.